the intense heat, scorching afternoons, and people struggling to find shades. These are typical scenes of tropical and subtropical regions, but this time it is subpolar region that is experiencing such conditions. My name is Rohit, and here we are going to have a discussion on heat phase in Canada and which is now spreading to various parts of the United States of America as well. In this discussion, we'll look at how heat waves have been generated in Canada and what about the heat waves in India. Right, so let's start. Let's start. This is what we have observed about the temperature that was observed in North America. You can see in these prairie regions of North America, in, in prairie regions of USA especially, temperature is very high. As we are moving little away from this prairie region, the temperature is relatively moderate. But these western states have, of United States have recorded very high temperatures, right? Which is something like, you can see in regions like Sacramento, which is the heartland of California has recorded 94, 96, 97 and 95 degree Fahrenheit. Similarly, if you look at the Salt Lake City in the western part of USA, it's 91, 95, 98 degree Fahrenheit. Similarly, the temperatures in other cities like Las Vegas is also very, very high. It is 108 and 109 degree Fahrenheit. What we have observed in Canada that the maximum temperature which was recorded previously and the maximum temperature that is being recorded now is very very high it has broken most of the records of maximum temperature in canada like for example if you see some cities like lytton the temperature the maximum temperature that was recorded so far was 40 degrees celsius and now the maximum temperature is close to 50 degrees Celsius. It is around 49 degrees Celsius temperature that has been recorded. Now, similarly, cash, where the temperature, highest temperature that was recorded was well below 40 degrees Celsius. And now the temperature is well above 45 degrees Celsius. The same is the case in Vancouver, Alberta. So, why the temperature has been increasing, that is the main point. And we know that this is a very unusual pattern that we see in the temperate areas. Right? Generally, this region should not have experienced such a high range of temperature. But what is creating this temperature? Let's have a discussion on that. What happens actually is that we look at ocean and atmosphere as a continuum. The atmosphere has always has been associated with oceans and oceans being associated with atmosphere. So it's basically oceano-atmospheric. Oceano-atmospheric. Generally, on the northwestern part of Pacific, the temperature is higher because of these warm ocean currents. But now what we see, this warm ocean currents have managed to reach to the western part of North America. That is to the eastern part of Pacific Ocean. So when we talk about eastern part of Pacific Ocean, it means the western part of North America. Right, especially the northern Pacific. So the temperature of northeastern Pacific increased. Right, this is a phenomena that can be seen in Atlantic Ocean as well. So this generates warm air masses. If you see here, there will be generation of warm air masses. And these warm air masses obviously are lighter, 
right we know that warmer masses are lighter so the tendency is to rise the tendency of the warm air masses to rise that's understandable because these are lighter so warm air masses expand become lighter tend to rise up so what is the problem that if, because if the warm air mass rises up we know higher we go the cooler we feel and this rising air mass should have caused rainfall because as we keep rising the temperature decreases and the relative humidity increases due to decrease in the humidity capacity so this should have caused rainfall that's because the temperature decreases relative humidity increases due to decrease in due to decrease in humidity capacity that's a normal phenomena and that rainfall should have been uh, the rainfall should have reduced the temperature but the condition is reverse we don't see uh, uh, temperature decreasing it's rising why now we'll look at is this air mass able to rise what has happened here this time is this a high pressure condition that is there in the relatively in the as at the moment as air mass rises there's a high pressure condition the high pressure condition means a denser air mass denser part of atmosphere so due to the higher density here right here i would write this this is due to higher density right the pressure is higher air mass that tends to rise the high pressure condition the the warm air mass that tends to rise is prevented is obstructed is restricted so it is rather unable to rise up and comes backwards it's like imagine a hot air balloon which is a which is having a very high temperature and that hot air balloon tends to rise but some obstruction at the upper part causes the balloon rather to sink it tends to rise because it is warmer and upper part is having higher density it pushes the warm air mass back to the surface it pushes the air mass back to the surface so what happens with that the air particles suppose these are air particles present in the that balloon air particles present in that air mass will start moving faster there'll be kind of disturbance produced in this air mass right the air particles present here start moving faster that air balloon that is getting a kind of two way compression as it rises and as it gets sinked because of the high temp high high pressure in the upper part so the warm the particles present here will start rubbing will start moving faster and this movement produces friction and friction produces heat and friction produces heat now the similar concept we will discuss in the adiabatic heating also whenever there's a moist moist air mass that descends along the eastern slope of rockies or for that matter in the leeward side of the mountain the air mass is getting compressed because of increasing atmospheric pressure and due to that atmospheric pressure compressing the air mass the friction is produced within the air mass and because of the friction heat is generated temperature increases so exactly that is happening in the western part of these regions western part of united states western part of canada that warm air mass is tending to rise it tends to rise up but due to compression air is compressed temperature increases and this is what is called as heat dome 
this this formation this, this structure that we find a kind of structure of air getting compressed because of high pressure and the increasing temperature forms a like visualized as a doom like structure and that doom is called as heat doom to a large extent it is very much similar to the heat islands but the difference is that the heat islands that is found in the urban areas which are also referred as urban heat islands they are found because of the typical structure that we find in this particular region of a city like we use more concrete there is more glasses air is unable to move or, or temp it is unable to mix here it is an open region it is happening in the prairie regions and this warm air is spreading its impact in most of the parts of western states and that is heat doom so we should be ready for, with heat doom for exams right? we can we can be asked this question okay now so what is happening this heat doom that has been generated what is happening there see this region is also known for a jet stream very close to this region that is around 60 degree belt there is a 60 degree latitude there is a jet stream that keeps circulating here this is a jet stream which we refer as subpolar jet stream which we refer as subpolar jet stream subpolar jet stream this subpolar jet stream keeps circulating at 60 degree belt from west to east due to the rotation of earth largely the effect of rotation of earth now that happens because the warm air masses if we briefly look at this part is the warm winds warm ocean currents rather these warm ocean currents spread along the subpolar latitudes warm ocean currents drag water from equatorial areas at equatorial areas along the western part right due to temperature difference they spread the water spreads towards the subpolar regions and here at the subpolar regions due to impact of westerlies the water keeps moving from west to east it's a warm water and obviously the air which is in contact with the warm water will tend to rise up it rises up and due to the effect of rotation of earth these jet streams move from west to east so this is just a brief idea about what exactly is the jet subpolar jet stream right so it's a, it's a, it's a kind of again ocean or atmospheric uh, continuum that is that results in the formation of the jet stream and the rotation of earth that is pushing it that is you know carrying it from west to east now what we see here is the jet stream obstructed by the heat doom a very strong wind movement in the upper troposphere is obstructed by the heat doom so it diverts a bit here and here so now that we had that warm air mass very hot air mass because of the I mean heat doom how it is formed we have already discussed that it is encircled by almost encircled by the jet stream right it's encircled by the jet stream so it gets prevented it's like an envelope of gas which is hot having a cover of air from outside cover of the jet stream outside the the typical movement of the jet stream is from west to east and sometimes when the speed of the jet stream is is lesser it forms these wavy structures when the when the wind speed is slightly the jet stream has a slightly lesser you know speed and that that wavy structure is called as rossby waves it's called as rossby waves those uh, wavy structure so some something like that there was rossby waves getting formed here and the heat dome gets trapped into this wave right so now the tendency is that high pressure zone containing this warm air 
is getting carried towards east because the jet stream has a movement towards east so this three doom will also be moving towards east so then you see in the in the regions of vancouver there was increase in temperature which got spread towards eastern part in regina and saskatchewan region also this this uh, high temperature was observed and it also impacted the us can the regions between us and canada border including the southern part of us and the western coast the southern regions like california arizona all these regions were affected by this because of these jet stream pushing the heat doom in different directions so this is what has happened in canada leading to increase in the heat temperature now question is is climate change responsible now these days any weather phenomena any anything that is happening in the atmosphere close to atmosphere you know that is somewhere related to climate change obviously yes it gets related see experts have said that you know we can't make a direct cannot be cannot be related directly related directly in the sense that formation of heat doom is the reason here but climate change directly getting in uh, i mean uh, directly related to the what we can see here in the canada it's very difficult actually to relate it right but at the same time as we said that anything happening in weather phenomena uh, in atmosphere is get somewhere related to climate change so yes due to climate change the temperature the average temperature average temperature of oceans has been increasing right it has been increasing oceans are becoming the heat sinks absorbing more and more of temperature because we know the water has higher specific heat and because of the mobility of air uh, water particles they can absorb heat for a very long duration of time so they can absorb more heat so yes there is an outside you know a very indirect relation so the increase in te temperature of oceans can increase the temperature of air and therefore such structures can be rapidly formed so yes climate change may not be directly associated but due to climate change increase in temperature and we expect such heat dooms we expect see these heat waves in the future as well now question is how are, how are these heat waves different from the heat waves that we see in northern part of india in, in in fact in various parts of india because heat waves also like india is these heat waves are not unknown to india right these are very commonly found very rapidly found uh, formed in 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 the summer season or in at the onset of summer in india so what is that what are what are the heat waves in india first of all understand that if we talk about the qualitative definition of a heat wave what is qualitative definition that is what is a feeling how do we see things around we don't we don't calculate the temperature so it is a condition of air temperature which becomes fatal to human body when exposed so any heat temperature any temperature of air that is fatal to human body if it gets exposed it can be referred as a heat wave but quantitatively right it is defined as a base of on the base of right the quantitatively it is defined on the base of temperature that is when there is an increase in temperature beyond a threshold right that is in terms of actual temperature from the normal how temperature is higher or you know how much high from the normal condition that is how we define the heat wave in india quantitatively so how much what should be the criteria what is the criteria and these definitions are according to indian meteorological department imd department 
on a very general account the temperature if the temperature is you know 40 degrees celsius or more for planes right temperature is 40 degrees celsius or more in the planes can be referred as a condition of a heat wave whether it is there or not but it can become a heat wave and for hilly areas it's 30 degree celsius or more we know that it's much higher than the normal conditions that we see in the hilly areas so based on the temperature now we should understand this a heat wave is a condition when the temperature is more than the normal by 4.5 degree celsius to 6.4 degree celsius if the temperature of any given region is more than 4.5 to 6.4 degree celsius it's called as a heat wave then we have a severe heat wave where the temperature is more than 6.4 degree celsius if the temperature increases 6.4 degree celsius than the normal it's a severe heat wave suppose a place records a temperature of 40 degree celsius the you know usual maximum temperature is 40 degree celsius and the place records 46 or 47 or 48 degree celsius temperature this is a condition of a severe heat wave now where do we have heat waves in here which regions are the heat wave regions in india let's see that part you can see this region here the red the regions here mean that this part of india this region here it means the temperature is very very high it is the region of the severe heat wave and the temperature goes up to almost 50 degree celsius very close to 50 degree celsius which also stretches to the Ahmedabad and regions like eastern part of Maharashtra and even to some parts of Telangana. Right, the regions were on the western part of northern plains and here in the rain shadow area of western Ghats, including eastern Maharashtra, some parts of Hyderabad, and also here the temperature is quite high, like it's 40 to 45 degree Celsius temperature right so what is the cause for this heat now all the all these you know the colors that have been used here so if it is green that means it's a normal condition yellow color is used for heat alert right and and this can increase the temperature right orange is used for a severe heat alert for the day Right, the temperature can increase for uh, higher condition, it can increase more than 45 degrees Celsius and it can persist for maybe two days. Right, so these are some of the impacts what can happen. High temperature can lead to heat related illness, dehydrations, etc. Then, red alert extreme heat alert for the day and severe heat wave persists for more than two days now if the severe heat conditions persist for more than two days what is uh, what can be the impact heat strokes for all ages now we were in canada it has been the reason for 300 deaths and 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 heat wave is is becoming the top three natural killers the deaths that are caused by the natural factors with that includes lightning that includes you know, earthquakes that includes uh, heat waves now what is the reason for the heat waves why do we have heat waves in in in, in these areas of india in in northwestern part of india one of the reason that we can see for for indian condition why we have such a so, so much of heat wave here is continentality it is continentality 
what is continentality? Uh, generally, in simple terms, if I have to explain continentality, we will call it as distance from the sea. Distance from the So, what happens? As we move away from the sea, as we keep moving away from the ocean or coastline, the temperature keeps on increasing. So, here, suppose there is a landmass. During summers, in this region, the temperature is very high, temperature keeps on increasing compared to the oceans, of course. This is the differential heating of land and water. What causes this differential heating of land and water is the difference in specific heat. Here, the specific heat of land mass is less. So, it heats up faster very quickly, whereas here the specific heat is very less. Specific heat is higher. So, on water, the specific heat is higher. The temp it takes longer time for it to heat. Whereas the continent due to continentality, continents have very little uh, specific heat, so it, they heat up faster. So more the area of continent, more are the chances of heating faster that can lead to development of heat waves or formation of these in, uh, high temperature conditions. Also. In the northern plains especially, there is this local wind which is called as Lu, a hot dusty wind that blows in the northern plains. Again, that is because it is it's, it's a continental region number one plus agricultural region. What happens with the agricultural regions? Vegetation cover is less. Although the standing crop is there, but that uh, does not prevent sun rays to heat the surface of earth. If it is a vegetation covered with the vegetation, if it is a forested region, obviously the heat effect on the surface would be lesser. The surface does not get heated much faster. But in an agricultural land, the heating process is much, much higher. So you would find that a large extent this agricultural land, agricultural land is also adding to the heat because shades are not there, heating does not happen in the same way, so on. Right? And regions of Telangana, some regions of Telangana which remains uh, drier, which receive less, lesser rainfall, causes, they also experience heat. So, the third reason is less cloud formation, less cloud formation. Right, that is because the moisture content in the atmosphere is less. If the content of the moisture is less, obviously the cloud formation would also be lesser. And why the moisture content is less? It is because there is a lot of continental areas in the regions. So, these are some factors which contribute to heat waves in India. So, if, if we look at the heat doom like structure, it is very less that we see in India that such heat doom structures can be formed because upper part does not have so uh, high temperature or uh, high pressure. In Canada, there is a high pressure which does not allow the air mass to rise up. Here, it is mainly because of the heating of the surface that gets translated to the, to the temperature, uh, to atmosphere and temperature increases. The similar heating process can be seen in other continental areas of the world as well, like Sahara, like Central Asia, like some parts of Pakistan. Right? All the regions which are far away from the uh, you know, continents can experience extreme weather conditions because the moderation does not happen. It is very close to the coastal areas at moderate temperature is, is observed and there is some degree of moderation. So, now we need to have a plan right, to reduce the casualties, to reduce the impact of these intense heat waves that are developing in India year after year 
right the impacts are intense right impacts are intense including health impacts like headaches nausea vomiting muscle cramps because the water loss from the body is very intense and as i mentioned already it's like dying of thirst right when the body moisture of our body water is very very less not even good enough to perform the basic physiological functions right so every year in india there are the huge number of casualties because of the same because of the impact uh, of these heat waves right it reduces the labor productivity in agriculture up to 2% affecting millions of subsistence farmers and if you look at the impact on the agriculture now you see right from canada to india the productivity of crops will have an impact like in canada the prairie regions of canada which are known for the wheat cultivation are called as bread baskets of the world right prairie regions wheat likes lesser temperature right it likes lesser temperature moderate conditions cooler climatic conditions moderate rainfall but if the heat waves of spreading in prairies or or in canada other parts of canada also obviously the heat productive uh, the, the productivity of wheat will reduce the increase in temperature does not support uh, wheat cultivation or does not prefer uh, support the wheat production so here the wheat in production would be impacted same thing in india the increase in temperature can affect the labor productivity can also impact severely impact the productivity of crops then also the natural habitats are affected right lot of lot of species die or they migrate because of the increase in temperature so right from the human loss to biodiversity loss to loss in the agricultural productivity heat waves can have a severe impact right they in fact have a severe impact on different parts of india right so early warning is there but most importantly most importantly we need to have a plan in place right for heat wave management in india right so this is some idea about what is heat waves how heat waves are generated in canada and how they are different in the formation in india right the heat waves that are formed in india right. so we'll meet for some other discussion thank you